What's up, people? It's your girl, Adiola. Honestly, I don't know where to start. Mr. President, <laughs> you're welcome to let me look here in case you're watching. You know, sometimes I wish you would actually watch this show. Do you know what is happening in your country? Are you even aware? Like, seriously, are you even aware? How can more than 200 people be killed in one day? This was not an accident. These people were murdered. They were butchered like animals. We're talking about children, wives, mothers, husbands, old people, young people. Don't you have children, Ogabwari? Yes, you have children. You know, as precious as they are to you, is as precious as those who died. You have a wife, Ogabwari. Do you know what it's like for somebody's wife to be butchered? You have a family, but it's like you have no heart. If you do, you would have done something before this happened. How long have we been shouting? We've been shouting for so long. This is not the first time that such is happening. And it's not as if you don't know who the killers are. They are from your ethnic group. And if people say that you are tribalistic, you would say no. Is this how you belong to everybody? Body by refusing to go after people from your ethnic group that are terrorizing a whole nation? Who is really advising this man? How could you send the vice president when such a tragedy happened, when more than 200 people were killed? Do you know that it took three days after the incident for Buhari to go and visit Plateau State? You know, that tells me that you didn't really want to go, Olga Buhari, that they had to convince you to go. That is why it would take you three days. How did you sleep for three days knowing that 200 of your citizens were massacred before deciding to go there and honestly i know this is not just nigeria but what what's up with all this ceremony that they do when presidents go to one place it's, it's your country it's not as if you are visiting another country you're supposed to go and comfort people that are crying people that are mourning and you come out of the plane shaking people's hands smiling and stuff like that i don't know things like that it gets me upset me i was thinking you will start crying before you even get out of the plane i don't even see like the remorse i'm not saying that we need your tears okay, worry. i'm just saying it would be good to at least know that you understand what these people are going through i would rather have him take the necessary actions than for him to cry but you're not taking any actions and you're not showing any empathy and then you say you are president of the whole country and you know why all of this is happening the husband have taken over everywhere in nigeria they are now grazing their cows at the national assembly's premises national assembly this is the National Assembly. Okay, good, got that. As and you can even smell the dung. Mm -hmm. As punish. Hey, fat. How did we get here? Literally, Nigeria has now become an animal kingdom. They are grazing their cows in Lekki, Lekki in Lagos. Our cow cannot even move. They've taken over the whole of Nigeria. See, this is Lagos, Lekki. Lekki, 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 Lagos. The balance. They block our Elegushi. car. We cannot even pass. Lekki area. See, look at. They don't block us. Block <laughs> us. Nobody can talk again. Lekki face one. Ah, Baba. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And no one can say anything. Because if you say anything now, they can kill you. No one has been successfully prosecuted though since this has been started killing people. This is massacre. And to add sort upon of injury, as if to reward them for all the people that they've killed, the Buhari's administration wants to spend 170 billion naira. I'm not saying million. Billion naira to construct ranches so that the cows of the herdsmen can graze. I, I like, while I think it's a good idea to have a place for them to graze so that they won't be every where as they've been i still have a lot of questions first of all why 170 billion naira that is almost 470 million dollars for cows to graze how much have you spent on those whose loved ones were killed by these herdsmen and how much are you spending on those whose arms were cut off by these herdsmen those whose legs were cut off these cows are getting better treatment than the human beings in nigeria so we have this kind of money to spend on grazing and we cannot spend such on one hospital i mean i'm not saying that grazing is not important it is very important a lot of nigerians eat beef but people are dying every day because of lack of health care also budgeting 170 billion for the herdsmen after terrorizing and killing people are you saying that the way to get you to do something for a group of people is if they start killing innocent citizens I don't get it so if other people want you to do something for them if they want you to budget big amount for them they should start killing innocent people i'm not saying you shouldn't spend money on grazing again i support the idea of them having a place to graze but can we bring people to justice all the perpetrators of this massacre can you bring them to justice first before you start building them grazing fields it's like you're not even holding them accountable for their actions at all these herdsmen have said it over and over that the lives of their cows is more important than the lives of human beings this is genocide people eat beef in 
in different parts of the world but it is only in nigeria that the life of the cow is more important than the human being that will eat the cow you know my fear is that people would want to revenge and of course you know what would happen after that i keep saying that there is fire on the mountain and nigerian officials don't even know that we have a problem if care is not taken this could lead to another war in nigeria and the reason that we are here in the first place is because buhari didn't do anything to those responsible for the massacre in benue state where they killed about 80 people in one day and he wants to run in 2019 <laughs> oh, God, buhari, you are not concerned <laughs> you are more concerned about winning the election than securing the lives of the people you want to govern who does that did you guys notice when the super eagles beat iceland how every nigerian celebrated even nigerians that are not at home everybody was celebrating which tells me that nigerians are really united when it comes to sport and if you can be that united over sport honestly i think our main problem is our leaders if we have the right leaders nigerians will thrive nigerians can get along and nigerians will thrive but the good thing is another election is coming go and get your pvc you guys know i don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real Moving on to Ethiopia, I'm so excited that this new prime minister keeps doing a lot of amazing things. The man is now talking about making peace with their neighboring country, Eritrea. For the first time in 20 years, a high-level Eritrean delegation has officially entered Ethiopia. The diplomats arrived in Addis Ababa for a visit that could mark the end of a tense relationship between the two neighboring countries. Wow, this is groundbreaking. You remember they used to be one country actually, and so they've intermarried. There are a lot of Ethiopians whose relatives are from Eritrea, a lot of Eritreans who have Ethiopian uncles, Ethiopian aunties, a lot of Ethiopians have Eritrean in-laws. Jonas Abraham, an Eritrean by birth, chose to stay in Addis Ababa and keep his job at a pro-government broadcaster when his entire family was deported in 2000 to Eritrea. Nothing prepared him for the two decades he spent away from his parents and siblings. My father died, and I couldn't even attend his funeral. It was painful not to see my mother for so long. And you know, physically, when you look at them, those of us that are not from the Horn of Africa, we cannot tell the difference when we look at them. Unfortunately, after some years of coming together, they started fighting. And the fight lasted for 30 years until Eritrea gained its independence from Ethiopia in 1991. And of course, there has been tensions between them since then. So it's so good to see that this new Ethiopian prime minister is rooting for peace. Honestly, I'm so happy for Ethiopians. You, you actually have a leader. So far, the man has been a huge example for all of African leaders. Congratulations in advance to both Ethiopia and Eritrea. We're so excited for you guys. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Now moving on to Zimbabwe. How? How, how do you commission a garbage bin? A dumpster? <laughs> I don't understand. And uh, why is it the Minister of Finance that is commissioning a garbage container? <laughs> My Zimbabwean people, please, you must educate your girl. You know, I'm so confused. And it's just one, just one container. If you had brought them like a dozen or something, yeah, maybe it would make sense. But to think that the man and his entourage would travel all the way because of a dumpster. Apparently, several officials were there. They drove in their expensive SUVs, their expensive cars to go and commission a dumpster. Where is the fear of God in Zimbabwe? By the way, did you guys notice that there was already trash in the garbage bin? <laughs> There's trash. <laughs> I don't understand. Was the thing not smelling? Because they were all smiling. The man was smiling. He was grinning. Already people are saying that this is all because of the coming election in Zimbabwe. You guys know that they're having their election coming up. Otherwise, why would the Minister of Finance be opening garbage bin? when there is still scarcity of cash in the country. Shouldn't he focus on that? And you know, before then, he commissioned a sports center and people were saying, well, sports is good, but you're supposed to be the minister of finance. Why are you commissioning a sports center? Leave that to the minister of sports. And now he commissioned a garbage bin. <laughs> And of course, you can trust my Zimbabwean people on social media. They now call the man Mr. Bean. They've been posting pictures, all kinds of pictures of them commissioning anything. The man's name is Chinamasa. So if you go on Twitter and just search for hashtag Chinamasa challenge, you will see all kinds of things that Zimbabweans are commissioning. <laughs> commissioning their own dustbin, commissioning food, commissioning toilets. <laughs> Commissioning plates, fruits, laptop, toothpaste, shoes, animals, even human beings. And 
you know the interesting part my people look at the same waste bin after one week this is the same dumpster that the man commissioned that is why people are saying that he did all that because of the coming election and speaking of the coming election in zimbabwe it breaks my heart that there was a bomb explosion on june 23rd while the president was having a rally and two people were killed i'm about to show you the video of the blast like the moment that it happened it happened just as the president and his entourage were stepping off the stage <laughs> really sad and really scary zimbabwe seriously you guys don't want to go that path i don't know whoever is responsible for this blast it, it doesn't lead to anything good the president is saying that it's the work of the supporters of mugabe i don't know and i don't care i don't care whose work it is obviously someone is trying to kill this president so that he or she can be president but i say to people all the time that you don't have to be president before you can make a difference if really you want to make a difference but if you're trying to kill somebody so that you can be in their position then it's obvious that your aim your purpose of trying to get in power is not to help the people but to steal money does that justify taking innocent lives two people two people died on that day for those who lost their loved ones please accept our condolences of course i'll keep you guys posted on the coming election in zimbabwe you guys know i don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real so before I sign out, a lot of viewers have written me that they like for me to make a Keeping the Real t-shirt. I was like, okay. Um, so now you can buy your own custom made Keeping the Real t-shirt online and they deliver to you. You pay for shipping and you, it get delivered to you. I actually don't do the shipping. There's a company that is doing all of this for me. And guess what? The price is very, very friendly. Yes, my people, there's nowhere else you will find this kind of price. But you know, it's because you guys are my people. And if for any reason, this company is not shipping to your country, uh, don't worry we're still working on it just check it out first make sure that they are shipping to your country before you purchase anything right now they are not shipping to Nigeria but I'm working with another company that can help you to ship your t-shirts to Nigeria but if you live in the US you can order anytime any day and they will deliver your t-shirts to you and of course I made sure that we had different designs not just pictures of me because I think it would be weird to have a picture of me on your chest but some people don't mind so for people like that we have you covered but for people who just want the written words we have you covered as well but not only that we have a lot of quotes that we are hoping would inspire people personally those are my favorite so go on my blog at lafayon.com and you will see a picture of me wearing one of the t-shirts just click on it it will take you to the link i also have the direct link to the t-shirts in the description below you can click on that and it will take you to the t-shirt they come in different colors even though it's black you can choose any color that you want you can choose any size you want you can choose the quantity you want we have for babies as well we have phone cases we have bags we have mugs we have everything you can now saturate your whole house with keeping aerial products <laughs> Now, for those that I promised a t-shirt when I hit my 100 episode in 2014, at that time I had a, I had people do their own version of Keeping It Real. We were hoping maybe 20 people would send their videos, but we got more than 100 videos. We sent out t-shirts to most of the people, but we ran out. And you know, I'm no longer working at Sahara TV, so I like to apologize again. I have apologized in written in letters i've apologized to all these people personally by the way via email boy if that's you and you're watching i like to apologize again but guess what these designs they, they even look better than the one that we had at that time and you can now order your own custom made make sure that you guys check them out and if you ever order a keeping a real t-shirt please take a picture with it and send it to me upload it on instagram and hashtag keeping a real with adiola i like to see you guys in your beautiful t-shirts again you guys know don't know much guess what i'm just keeping a real all right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it real right off in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please make sure that you do that. Until next week, I will see you all later. Peace out.